Welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video I'm just going to be reacting to the final two men's singles matches that were played in the Battle of the Brits events. Before going into that I just want to say what a fantastic event I think is being created by the LTA and Jamie Murray. You know it looked as safe as possible um, from a fan point of view. You know all the players have said it's gone uh, fantastically well and I think it was important to get um, British tennis back on the move as soon as that was safe to, safe to do so and I think the tournament uh, has been run fantastically well. Also there's been £100,000 at least raised for NHS charities which is brilliant and from the players perspective you know it's brilliant to see Andy back on court in Britain and back playing somewhere near his best and uh, just recovering really from the hip injury you know he's played some brilliant tennis this week still not at his 100% best but you know he's not too far away. Uh, Dan Evans and Kyle Edmund have played brilliant tennis this week and played a good final earlier today. Cam Norrie has shown this week that he's sort of on the verge of breaking into that top 50 uh, of the men's and really breaking into um, the top of the men's British rankings as well. He's, he's played very well this week and I'm sure he's gained a lot of followers and also we've had a chance to see a couple of youngsters in Ryan Penniston and Paul Job who played out a fantastic group match of the day. I know a lot of people are watching that one and were thoroughly impressed with their levels of performance and hopefully they've gained um, a lot of a lot of fans this week. Uh, there's a lot more people going to follow their careers and hopefully attend uh, events to watch players like that, uh, which will also help with their trajectory and progress in their careers. So moving on today, I mentioned this morning Andy Murray's ha had to withdraw from his playoff match against Cam Norrie. He had a problem with his shin, so James Ward stepped in and I did see me preview this morning. I expected Cam Norrie to winning straight sets, you know, Carrick Norrie's had a a good 18 to 24 months on the hard court, he's brought him to the top uh, 100, he's reached the Auckland Open final and he's played very well this week, um, given everybody's played a, a fantastic match and Ward actually started the match very well, uh, he's serving well, he was hitting through the ball really well and he, he settled on the court, I felt quicker than what Norrie did, but once Norrie got his lefty serve going and Started using his change ups and being more aggressive uh, down the line and moving Ward from from side to side. We know Ward's a big guy, he struggles uh, moving around the court quickly. And once Norrie found his ground strokes and really attacked the short balls, um, it was a pretty routine win at the back end of that first set. And second set, I thought Norrie played very well. Um, and yeah, he fully deserved his win. He, he obviously comes third in the tournament, which I think is reflective of how he's played. You know, he's he's been very good this week, very consistent, um, uses his lefty serve very well. As I say, he's a player that's still only young, 23 or 24, and he's he's on the cusp, I think, of breaking into the top 50. Uh, I think we can see Cam reaching the business end of some biggish tournaments within the next 18 to 24 months. And I'm sure he'll be challenging Evans and Edmund for that uh, British number one spot, along with Andy when he fully gets going back on tour. But moving on to the big one, the final. Um, at the start of the week, I tipped Dan Evans to win the event, um, and he did. And you know, Dan's has been so impressive uh, for the last 18 to 24 months. You know, the way he sort of transformed his career after his ban has been admirable, really. He's, you know, he's he done very well at Wimbledon last year, uh, lost in an epic uh, match, but won Nottingham and Surbiton, and mentioned how brilliant it was to win in front of a British crowd. And his career's just gone from strength to strength. You know, he's climbed the rankings all the time. He's now inside the top 30, currently ranked 28, which is career high, best ranking. He's challenging top 16 players, and just the level of consistency. You know, his backhand is, is fantastic. But the thing I like about Dan Evans is his all round game is brilliant. You know, his serves improving all the time. He's very quick around the court. He's got brilliant defence. He can turn defence into attack with counter punching. In his backhand, I've said it many times, it's one of the best in the world. The way he can dictate matches with it by you know hitting it down the line for clean winners. He's got that power and precision with it, but he's also got that slicey dicey uh, backhand as well, where he can he can really change up the paces, uh, really slow down the opponents and um, or puzzle them almost. And I felt he'd done that very well uh, today against Kyle. For Kyle, you know, I think it's been a good week for him. You can see how hard he's worked in lockdown, you know, putting on that four kilogram of muscle. And I don't think he bought his best tennis today um, or yesterday, really. He got through that semi final match yesterday against Norrie. Um, but he had to produce a level way above that today, and he didn't uh, quite produce it. 
But yeah, Kyle, you know, he, he broke through in 2018 at the Australian Open and brought him to the top 16 and we wondered, you know, how far could Kyle get and unfortunately in 2019 he didn't have his best of years. Uh, but he started 2020 very, very well. You know, he won the title in New York and you can see how hard he's been working on his game. And he came up in this tournament. I think he's, he's had a really good week. You know, he's, he's lost to Dan Evans today, playing subpar, but, you know, he's, he's, he's had a long week and these players haven't been on court for a long, long time, but... The main reason I picked Evans to win this match is because I feel he's got more variety, more variety to his game. You know, Evans can, as I say, out hit opponents from the back of the court. He can attack the short ball and really uh, punish any any loose errors and counter punch almost against Edmund. You know, he, he wants people to attack him um, and come into the net. So Evans can pass them and. You know, Evans capable of, of great net play, which he showed today. I just feel Kyle's slightly too reliant. Um, on his serve and forehand, you know, he didn't serve well from the off, uh, and his forehand was wayward pretty much all day. Just didn't quite time it. Was missing the lines and giving quite a lot of unforced errors to Dan. But for Kyle, I think, you know, he has to serve well from the start. I think he got broken his first two service games and wasn't serving many first serves. And from that, the right was sort of on the wall. Uh, you know how well Evans does in rallies. Um, as I say, he's, he sliced backhand and. He's about to hit his backhand down the line. You never quite know what you're going to get from Dan during the rallies, and he he really puzzled Kyle. You know, with this with the slow pace and the ball, Kyle had to really develop um, all of his own pace and his forehands, and he just sort of overhit. Um, and as I say, gifted uh, Evans a lot of points, but yeah, Evans, I predict him to win in straight sets. As I say, I just think he's got a better all round game, and he would. He would out. He would outlast uh, Edmund. I thought if he started quick, Dan, he, he just seems to grow and grow in confidence and start striking the ball cleaner as the as the match goes on. That's exactly what happened. You know, he played brilliant in that second set. Really took it to Kyle. Um, sensed his opportunity, and just hit many many winners. He was he was fantastic. I thought Dan today, and he has been all week. You know, he's he's definitely deserving of the title. He's been the more con- most consistent player. Uh, fully deserving. And yeah, just sort of looking ahead to the rest of the year now. Uh, for the few of the players, I think Dan, it's just about staying fit. Really, he's he's playing the best tennis of his, his tennis of his life. Um, you know, there's little bits of his game he can improve on. I think he's second serve, and he can maybe do with a bit of work. Um, but on a whole, you know, Dan's had a fantastic eight eight months, and there's not a lot he's doing wrong right now. He just needs to keep keep fit, um, keep focused on the job at hand, and I'm sure he can climb at the top sixteen. You know, the skies really the limit for Dan. I think he's coming into his peak, 30-year-old now. And for the next three or four or five years, I can see Dan really climbing the rankings and challenging and winning events. Uh, for Kyle again, started this season very well. I think for him, it's just about um, getting that more consistency on his first serve. You know, it's, it's fantastic when he's hitting, it. Um, you know, yesterday, so 14 years as today, it just wasn't there. Um, if you can find that, First serve, he often sets the points up very well for that big forehand, and I think you know Kyle is a player that's quite reliant on his first serve, so just about getting that in consistently. Um, but yeah, had a very good start of the year, and I'm sure he's looking forward to the U.S. Open. If that was to go ahead, it's a it's a court um, that will suit him, uh, being a hard court. And yeah, for, same for Cam Norrie, you know, started twenty twenty well and has played very well this week. Uh, Paul Drum, Ryan Penniston will have had fantastic experiences being around the likes of Evans, Edmund and Murray um, being on TV as well probably got them a few more followers and probably made them more determined than ever to uh, continue their careers and the last word probably goes to Andy Murray who I, you know just for every British tennis fan it's brilliant to see Andy back on court uh, feeling well again and playing some of his best tennis you know we all know Andy's not 100% bang there yet but just seeing Andy back in court playing well and enjoying his tennis is, is a brilliant sight. Um, and, you know, I think if Murray can get two or three uh, months in at the end of the year and maybe four or five events in next year, who knows, if, if he can get a good break over Christmas and feeling good in his hip, um, then maybe Andy can start challenging for Grand Slams again and winning events, which will be fantastic to see. But I think the most important thing for Murray is just that he stays fit for now, just manages his time really, keeps... Keeps the tor- tournament schedule uh, to how he, to how he feels uh, right at the time and yeah just just stay fit really and hopefully um, 
just keep getting better and better and fitter and fitter as, as the tournaments progress. But yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed the week. I think it's been a fantastic tournament. It's been brilliant to see um, all the British players do battle. But thanks to anybody who's watched the video um, this week. The predictions have gone pretty well. Um, I did predict both Norrie and Evans to win today in straight sets, which happened. I predicted Evans at the start of the week. Uh, so it's gone pretty well. But yeah, thanks for watching uh, the videos. Please like and subscribe. There is a British women's tournament coming up in a couple of weeks, which I'll be doing uh, similar videos for. And then obviously going to the US Open and French Open, I'll be doing um, previews and predictions for all of them tournaments as well. So just stay subscribed to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. But thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.